Hello and welcome to another FXpansion Geist tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to take you through Geist's browser. We've put a lot of work into the browser to make it as easy as possible to move around your disks and to find any content you might want to. And there's a lot of nice features that are worth explaining here. Firstly, after you install Geist you'll see under the content tab the Geist factory content. This will always take you back to the Geist factory samples and presets which you can see here. Hits, loops and presets. Navigating around folders is just as you would expect. Below this we have shortcuts to various common places. The first of which is the documents path that you set in the Geist preferences. This is the location where any presets you save, user presets, will be saved. There's the systems documents folder and the desktop and then there are various drives. We also have favorites, searches and shortlists which I'll come to in a moment. The browser has a very powerful search tool. If I go into the hits folder and search for let's say 808 you'll see there it's very quickly come back with every 808 sample in our library. Now, if I want to save this search, I can do so very easily and it's, it appears under my saved searches. Let's go back, search for 909. Save those search results. And there we go, 808, 909s. The browser also has a nice feature called shortlists. Let's say I'm browsing around to build up a kit which is uh, 16 pads um, and I'm auditioning various files. I like this kick drum so I'm going to drag it into this pane down here and this is the shortlists pane. Maybe another kick drum and then I'm going to go um, into the snare folders and I'm going to go fat and heavy snares and drag a couple in from there. The shortlist file can just keep getting longer and longer until I'm satisfied with it. I can then just like the searches save the shortlist file uh, as 909 kicks and assorted snares, bit of a long name but it'll work and there you can see it's appeared under my shortlist folder there. If I now clear this shortlist and make another shortlist random snares whoops I misspelt random there you could use it for you know shortlisting various samples for a song or you could use it to put in all your favorite kick drums from different parts of the hard drive or your favorite loops um, and save them into one list and they'll always be available across different Geist sessions. So let's take a look at some of the other features of the browser. Up at the top here we have a set of arrow keys which will allow you to navigate around the current location back and forward buttons that work just like backwards and forwards in uh, a browser and then we have open folder and back to the parent directory and we have a refresh button. There's the search bar if you want to do an advanced search um, there's a lot of options there you can do up to three different uh, search types to narrow things down the, um, all these buttons at the top here, by the way, the sort of navigation buttons are MIDI learnable. So if we go and hit the MIDI learn key, you can see there that these can be assigned to MIDI. So you can set up your MIDI controller to actually navigate around the browser very easily, which means you don't need a mouse or a keyboard in order to look around and load samples, which is a nice feature. Moving on, down at the bottom here, we have a preview volume. Uh, if I have preview enabled which is this button here you can see there I can adjust the preview volume 
And I can also, by right clicking on the preview volume knob, I can select which of Geist's 16 stereo outputs to use for the preview. So if you're playing live or something like that and you want your um, preview to come out of a different channel on your sound card or go into your headphones, whatever, that's entirely possible. Uh, there's a stop preview button in case you preview a really long file, you don't want to listen to the end of it. Um, and these two buttons here, the slice and auto load button, are really quite important. So um, they have a lot of effect on how the browser reacts with Geist itself. Let's take a look at that. I'm just going to reset Geist here so that we've got an empty empty Geist to play with. Now at the moment I have neither slice nor auto load enabled. When I click on a file in the browser, um, it previews it because I've got preview enabled, but it doesn't do anything else. We're currently browsing single hit WAV files, so if I enable auto load, you can see here I've got pad 1 selected in the pads. If I click on a hi-hat, it automatically loads it to this pad. I can move on, choose a different file, and it automatically loads it. The same is also true of loops. Let's find a, uh, a nice loop. If I take auto load off, you can hear the loop being previewed, but nothing's been loaded. If I have auto load on, it will now load that loop to this pad. Of course, part of the strength of Geist is it being able to slice loops, and this is where the slice button comes into play. If I now click on that file again, It previews it, but it also loads it into the slicer. Now, because auto load and slicer enabled, the browser has automatically sliced up the loop and placed it across the pads. So now when I press play, it's automatically playing in time and nicely sliced up. Now we'll cover the slicer in a separate tutorial, so I don't want to go into that too much at the moment, apart from to explain that this slice button in the browser itself is very important to the way uh, Geist's browser and the slicer interact. One more thing that's worth explaining about the slicing in Geist is the ability to prevent files from being loaded into the slicer. Single hits such as kicks and snares, one might safely assume that we would never want to open them in the slicer. And Geist gives you a way to achieve this. If I go back to the factory content and the hits and open up any of the hits folders, you'll see here that the icons have got a small star next to them. And this means that they've been flagged to never open in the slicer. So even though I have slice enabled, if I click on a single hit file, the slicer is not opened automatically. I can change this by selecting allowing slices of files in this folder. And as soon as I do that, you'll see the little star on the WAV icon disappears. And when I click on anything it opens in the slicer of course because they're only single hits there's only one slice there but then I can add more slices and use the slicer in the normal way so the possibility is there to reverse that In the same manner, any folders you might have on your hard drive that are just single hits, you can easily just navigate to that folder, right click and say disallow slicing of files in this folder and Geist will never slice anything in that folder even when slicing is enabled. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, not the most musical of tutorials, but we'll do something a bit more exciting in the next one.